Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Talk, a 10,000 year odyssey. And we have come together for the last two years to learn all about cannabis. Over the 10,000 years, cannabis has been used, well, first, it's a plant, it's used for food and medicine and religion and dear old uncle. We can't talk about cannabis without Uncle Sam. But in Hawaii, we have legal medical cannabis. And today we're going to talk to a dear friend, and you'll know I only talk to dear friends. We're going to talk to Theo Alexander about medical cannabis and its use for, in his case, the veterans, and his whole business is about PTSD and other things that affect veterans and how this product helps them with PTSD. So, Theo, welcome. Yes, thank thank you, you again for always coming on. Tell us how you got started with camo or what, what, what does camo mean? Uh, Camel, and thanks for having us on the show. It's always a good time um, with good friends um, to come on and talk about what we're doing, uh, helping to evolve our state's 329 program. Uh, what is a 329? Veterans. The 329 program is our state's state registry for medical cannabis, oh, okay. uh, access to medical cannabis. So to be able to go into a dispensary or utilize a drug in a medical format, you have to have a 329 card. Oh, okay. So, so. the 329 is about the card. Yes, it is. That yes, is the state issued card yes so that you for people who qualify for medical cannabis yes okay yes, All right. yes. So, yes. so with camo camo stands for complementary and alternative medicines of oahu um, camo started out as an ideal um, an idea uh, a lot of people wanted to use cannabis didn't know the process the process wasn't very clear in the early 2000s uh, when they first started to come out and say legislatively Cannabis is available for people who qualify with a given condition, medical diagnosis. And from 2000 up until now, <clears throat> the state has made leaps and bounds when it comes to giving people access to cannabis. As long as you have a qualifying medical condition and a doctor that's boarded here in Hawaii. So the doctor has to be board certified in Hawaii. It can't yes. be some other doctor someplace else. So some, some doctors have dual um, boarding but, in other states, but they have to be boarded in Hawaii. In to Hawaii, yeah, yes. okay. Yes, and so we were uh, more interested in getting veterans access, uh, given the 22 suicides a day and over 30 overdose, accidental overdose deaths a day that we're seeing in our ranks. Um, so overdose of opioids. Of opioids. And uh, okay. if you've been watching the news lately, yes, we Oklahoma have. Oh, has successfully uh, sued Purdue, Janssen, and Johnson & Johnson for this reason. And I would say that some of this is going to leak into the VA's uh, purview because of course, we do have some veterans that either commit suicide accidentally or intentionally. So that's How the one thing. How do you commit that, suicide accidentally? Because um, with that medication, there's oh. a lot of drug interaction. Oh, um, there's I a lot see. of safety precaution with it. And if you take it outside those safety precautions, you make the side effect is overdose. Oh, I see. Okay. So taking too much of it or drinking with it, I mean, any of those things could happen. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it could happen. Okay. Unintentional. So, yeah. So. Now, you're a veteran. Yes. Tell us about your service. Yes. Well, I'm a Gulf War veteran. I entered into a Gulf War Gulf veteran. War veterans a while so, back. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously, but that was that, uh, no, what was it? That, uh, In the Gulf War? The um, Gulf War. It was a Persian, Persian Gulf War. Persian yes. Gulf, yes. But that was the spent uranium? Yes. Um, yeah, I was on the aircraft carrier, so right. we were always dealing with bombs. Uh -huh. uh, most of it was made with depleted uranium depleted material, uranium. so yeah. it's radioactive so that, material. So you get affected by this radioactive material, yes, as it, does everybody else on the ship. Yes, it's akin, if you're standing within 100 feet of a uh, depleted uranium scud missile, that's akin to 1,000 x-ray. So you come out with this ailment, so, that, then, so that's why your focus is on... Yes. I get it, since, okay. Since, the early 90s, I've been focused on trying to find a way to mitigate a multi-symptom um, diagnosis. Um, they just came out with Gulf War Syndrome. It's still not really recognized as well as PTSD syndrome 
or Agent Orange. But 85% uh, of the veterans who serve along with me, almost 270,000 men and women, uh, still don't have any relief or any medical benefit or claim uh, to their symptoms to mitigate or treat a medical treatment. Um, but what's happening right now, they do have a registry. They're looking at it more intensely. Um, but more importantly, PTSD is being managed by some things like alternative medicine, whether that's mindful meditation therapy, whether that's equine therapy, horticulture therapy, anything that is going to get the veteran in a mindset of progression in the mental state of mind, you know, mm -hmm. and away from you know, some of the abuse or some of the triggers that they might have at the VA or just in life in general at, on a job site. So our goal in creating CAMO, Complementary Alternative Medicine of Oahu, is to guide veterans who are in need of those type of treatments alternatively um, into the process of finding something that may work for them personally or individually. So that's, now you have a master's degree in some kind of medical something or other. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I hold a master's <laughs> degree in, in healthcare administration. So healthcare I've been an administrative of different divisions of hospitals and things like that and responsibility for orthopedic surgical centers. So I have a pretty in-depth look at how the policies and procedures kind of work along with how you can get billing for treating veterans. Um, we're getting over the stigma right now of veterans getting treatment. Now that we have the community care program, which was the VA Choice program, but now we have a wider, a broader opportunity for veterans to seek help out in the community for our yes. community physician. Yeah, I remember the bills yes. specifically said Hawaii and Alaska. Yes, yes, yes. Due yes. to its uh, ge geographical makeup yes, that yes. the bill targeted Hawaii and Alaska. Yes. So now these are some of the products that you, uh, that your patients, your, the other veterans. Yeah, we, we, use. we found a manufacturer in Oklahoma, fortunately, um, that's an FDA uh, registered laboratory they manufacture out of. So they, hop, they operate or manufacture at the highest standard of uh, formulation. So we was looking for something like that to make it more safe, more reliable for a veteran who is seeking alternative means of treating their symptoms. And, mm -hmm. and we have been able to give this to uh, patients, and they found some relief. Um, I, I don't, we don't make any medical claim. We kind of just have people try it, and if, they, if it if works it work, for them, yes. you know, keep doing it. You know? mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> one of the things CAMO does is introduce the patient to the opportunity to be educated first on the product and what it will do with your body, and then also to get into the 329 system. All of our products are THC-free, so it's CBD-based products. But we do have access to physicians who we refer our veterans to to get their 329 card appointment to be approved. So they get, an, you recommend certain doctors, I yes. guess in their neighborhood or whatever. Yes. Then they go to the doctor. Yes. And the doctor examines and says, yes, you have such and such, and you, you are eligible to get the card. Is yes. that, is that so the process? Or once the doctor um, approves the appointment or once the patient goes through the doctor's appointment and the medical record is documented, it's then forwarded to the uh, Department of Health here, and they make the approving decision. Uh, once that approving decision is made, the veteran will get their card within seven day, 10 day time period. And at that point in time, once they have the card, they can enter into the dispensary um, to get other medications that are more THC based. So the, but they can only get the THC in the dispensary. Yes, that's the only so legal So none place. of these have? Yes, we, we, we um, formulate with zero THC. We extract the THC out of the USDA certified hemp seed that we grow to produce our product. Um, once we get their product um, processed, we then extract the, C the THC out of it, preserving this CBD. And then we formulate from there. Oh, okay. So then it's completely safe. Yes, it's, it's completely safe. Um, National Institutes of Health have even said, the World Health Organization have said, cannabis itself, full spectrum or broad spectrum, is the safest medicine known to man. So what we try to do is help veterans that are experiencing symptoms and others. We don't turn around, turn anyone away, but as far as veteran specific, because of the 22 suicides a day, because of the 30 accidental overdose, we are very focused on bringing a, a better treatment protocol to veterans. That includes follow-up services. So with CAMO, once the um, patient, or the veteran goes to get the card, once they have it in hand, we'll continue service with them. And we don't charge the veteran for that, but if they need to have patient education, more education with their condition and how cannabis or CBD may or may not help, we'll provide that for them. So that, now these all do different things. Yes, um, well, overall, CBD in the body helps to return the body to a more homeostatic environment. Um, it helps to relieve 
uh, pain or chronic condition. And so that's one thing that a lot of veterans are experiencing because of chemical exposure or debilitating injury. Um, there's going to be a lot of pain. So that's one of the most common conditions that is approved for veterans, at least, um, here in the state of Hawaii. So that's one of those is when you don't know which one will work on who. Is and that that's, correct? That, that's a part you, of the, you can't say absolutely for your pain, this yeah. is going to do. Well, right? like I said, for, fortunately, we have a group um, out of Oklahoma, um, Cantec Products. They have a number of different things. They have over 70 products that we source from. and they try and formulate to the condition oh, okay. or a groove condition. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it, but it's the best thing it is, is to have a third party analysis, make sure that you have a botanical, not a synthetic variation of CBD. Um, a lot of people are, if you've seen the news, the vaping, uh, e-cig, and some of them are saying it's medical marijuana, that's all contributing to synthetic products. You know, that's contributed by synthetic products. So, so if I wanted to, all of this, Go to the lab, and it, they would give you a, exactly yes. a printout of what it is, what's in it, and what have you. Yes, yeah, so, all so of that our products, it would be safe. Yes, yeah, so, so all you of our would know have that, a third-party yeah. analysis, um, and we also have internal um, quality controls that we use. So all of our products will test with CBD zero THC with no contaminants. No contaminants. Yes. Oh, that's that's wonderful uh, to know that. Yes. So now. Do each of these do something different? Well, we, we, we advise that with the pain bombs, which the is pain, pain bomb right here. Yeah. So that's a deep penetrating. It the, helps so to you, soothe, you helps rub to mitigate. It, it goes into the CB1, CB2 nerve endings and helps to re relieve pain. So uh, but I, you, you don't ingest that? You, no, you, the application is usually, it's a topical. topical. You rub it on in the acute area or in the infected area. Uh-huh. And what is this lavender? So the lavender is our massage oil. We have lavender and peppermint. It's really good for, for massage. Uh, a lot of our massage uh, therapists that are associated with us that we refer to will use that to help the patient um, decrease the inflammation, inflammation. Inflammation. Inflammation, yes. uh -huh. And then here we have our, one of our newest products called Active Duty RX, and this is for a uniform personnel, whether you're a first responder or a person in uniform. Some people have told me that, you know, being in uniform, they've been advised the medical association or the, you know that they cannot have any cannabinoid in their body and i'll leave that between them and their doctors and whatever regulations they have to abide by in uniform but some of our firefighters our policemen our emt personnel they take these products on a regular basis uh -huh. so that one would be safe for them yes and, and that's our ptsd formula so again no medical claim but we've seen some some symptoms that are mitigated by the doctors on documentation but mm -hmm. until we get the health department to advocate for us a little better and give us more of a, a guideline to go by as far as what these conditions can help with. If you look at the conditions that qualify a person for the 329 card program, um, these are some of the same conditions that CBD is going to help with. So, I mean, hopefully we but, can get them to have, have more, a little bit more advocacy. Well, now, for these, do you need a 329 card? Not at all, not at all. You don't have to have a card. When, when you come to our services or when you enter, enter to our website, um, 808camo.org, by the way, uh, <laughs> you, you will find that we will help you through the process. A lot of this is education. Right. Pro proper learning will give you the understanding of what you can do, how you can do it. And then we also have the products that you can experience. But with the 329 card program, you definitely have to have a medical evaluation from a board yes. of physician. Okay. Well, we need to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to another member yes. of CAMO. And he is going to tell us about your upcoming stand down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're excited about that. Yes. All right. We'll be back in one minute. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mun Lee and the Friends of Think Tech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu. The Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, 
the Sidney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Aloha. I'm Marcia, and we're back. And today we are talking about the 329 stand down. Is that, did I get it right? Veteran <laughs> stand down. Okay. And we're talking to James, JT as we call him. <laughs> and you've met JT before. Very JT glad to be back. is Thank also one of the board members of CAMO. And uh, what is your position with CAMO? Mostly the community outreach. I like community. to be more hands on, yes. Community outreach. But now you're studying nursing, are you? Yes, that's actually uh, my passion. Uh, first aid, first responder is something that I really enjoy doing. I intend to go orthopedic surgeon eventually. Though, so oh, great. I want to get my doctor. So, but you, you are a veteran. Yes. You, and you were a medic? Yes, I was a medic. I was stationed here at Schofield Barracks for a while, and I taught first aid and combat lifesaver courses. So you know firsthand about oh, yeah. all of the ailments and problems with veterans. That's actually what drove me to start, help start the organization that we're working. Uh, coming home with transition and transitioning with PTSD and other friends and neighbors, PTSD. A lot of homeless veterans here in Hawaii also have, so it was only right to you know, reach out. So now tell us about this event that's coming up. We have a poster about the 329 Veterans Stand Down. Okay, what is a stand down? Stand down is where you get a group of organizations that all have a similar uh, goal, similar focus. And in this case, it's helping veterans get work to help raise awareness of the medical use of CBD medical cannabis, and to put out more information for the State 329 program. Okay. So help the State Department of Health help to advocate for uh, proper use and proper dosing. Well, now, with what is the word stand down? Because most people say, well, what is a stand down? Oh. <laughs> I mean, for those of us that have spent our lives with the Uncle Sam, we know what a stand down is. But tell us, our audience, what is a stand down? It's basically where we you come and you get services. Well, uh, we, Veterans. Yeah. Um, we don't turn anyone away, but it's initially for our veterans, primarily for veterans. Yeah, so, but even active duty, don't they have stand downs? They do, actually. Um, more so after deployment, after we come home and we've been debriefed already, then there are groups or organizations who provide different information um, for, about resources that are available for the soldiers when they come home to help with their transition back into society, reintegration. Oh. Is that what it was? Okay. Yes, that's yes, yes, the goal of the stand, stand down. Stand down is mm -hmm. to. Oh, okay. So now you're going to have this stand down. Tell us what's going to happen. You have a lot of good speakers coming in, uh, mainly Dr. Sue Sisley. Tell us about, is, about her. Uh, yeah. Sue's amazing. She's been advocating for veterans' use for CBD and clinical studies for a lot of years now, actually. She has her own institute in uh, Arizona, I believe. She's been doing amazing uh, research. She was, at the time, the only doctor who was approved by the FDA to do the uh, research. So it's really amazing that we have her on board to So help she's with us. done the clinical Trials, right? right. Oh, wow. Amazing. The only one, huh? The, right. Is the that what you said, one. the only one? Right. She was yeah. the only one who was approved. So she'll be here to talk to you about her findings with her. Yes. So, and, and then do I understand that she's, okay, <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> that this is about her findings for how cannabis helps P with PTSD? Yes. Is that? Um, that would be correct. As well as also to help to inform the community, the local community. Not everybody, a lot of people are more interested in CBD now that the laws are changing, but they still don't necessarily know where to go to get proper information. And there are a lot of not uh, clean, not good products on the market. So to know what you're using 
and to get you know just all around better you know quality of information. Well, yeah, because you know. The ABC store sells. Everyone and sells. There's a service station that sells it. It's like, <laughs> right. what? But if you check the labels on a lot How of those. How do you know? Right. And that's, the, that's another reason why the 329 stand down is so important because we put out the information. We have different agencies, uh, drug policy. Um, sorry, Dr. Uh, well, Wendy. Uh, Wendy Gibson. Wendy Gibson, and Another yes. one's very, very wise. And, she's and, been a guest, yes. Right. She's, um, and we have others. Too. It's just... It's very exciting. There's a lot of people who, a lot of the dispensaries as well. And since, uh, so that they will, uh, keep this, so this is an information briefing as well as Absolutely. the product. Absolutely. So is there anything special? So your, the doctors will be there that give, uh, right. your, the, your flyer said free. Right. So what's free? Okay. The, we cover the venue, and we cover the doctor's But it says fees. that you're going to give free cards, free cards to certain people. Free medical evaluations, right. We cover the cost of the doctor's evaluations. Initially, oh. when a, do a lot of the doctors, uh, the evaluation costs $100, $200, $300 sometimes, depending on where. And a lot of the patients are on fixed income. They cannot afford that. So we cover that fee, and all this patient has to pay is the thirty-eight fifty to the Department of Health. We cover the other fees. So you cover all those fees. Correct. So you're for for the veterans that show up. Right. That you're going to cover that. That's great. We're trying to get it to become a service that's across the board to where veterans or people can come to us and we can actually cover that cost. So another reason why we're fundraising big this year. So, is there a charge to? to Participate? No, there's no fee to participate. The only fee is the thirty eight fifty to the Department of Health. So that every veteran Absolutely every, what about active duty? Can they come to? They can come to get information if they would like. As but, far as I know, I think it's still not C B D is not available for active duty yet because of the regulations. But by all if they're looking for information or different anyone looking for information on a stand down, how to help veterans and CBD uh, to come. Well, will there be other topics other than CBD? And there will, depending on which speakers are speaking. <laughs> we have uh, a, a nice, at least about 10 different people who intend on coming. And so, it, <laughs> so <laughs> well, Okay, so we have Dr. Wendy Gibson, and she's, amazing. Been, uh, she is amazing. Right. I'd, I'd, so much of what I learned, I've gotten from her. Yeah, from, she's definitely yes. a, a trailblazer in there. Yes, my, my introduction to her was Cannabis 101. Yeah, she's, <laughs> right? yeah, she's very <laughs> smart. Like, yes. She and, has a lot of passion. I like watching Wendy go. Yes. And that's, uh, Willis Sparrow, hopefully, also. Will, Senator Sparrow? Uh, correct, yes, yeah, Senator Sparrow. And he's doing... Television uh, now, huh? Right, yeah. He's doing the high on art, the Hawaii and the art one. He's also doing uh, cannabis oriented uh, television show too. Yeah, because yeah, he was one of those when he was a senator with the very beginning of this whole movement of, of medical cannabis. Him and uh, Senator Gabbard. Who yes. We, hopefully, we can get to. Is he come. coming? I hope so. I definitely intend to reach out to him. I intend to reach out to uh, Tulsi and many of the city council members if they intend to come. Um, nobody's excluded, so de definitely everybody's welcome. But I would love to have them come and take part in the conversation and be around the VA directors, anyone who's interested in helping veterans or just getting the information, you know, getting more, a, a better understanding of. Yeah. Gladly. I, w I would think that, especially Tulsi being uh, a veteran herself. Absolutely. Yeah. Or is she a veteran yet? She's still on active duty? <laughs> yeah, Are you uh, right. a veteran after your active <laughs> duty or before? I think initially it was after you've served. Or but she's after still you've on deployed, active duty. But she's yeah. still on active she's duty, but she's also it. deployed too. I feel. So, yes. All right, so she, <laughs> either, same team. Same team, <laughs> I'm yes. I'm excited about it. <laughs> I, I welcome it. Yes. Um, Definitely, definitely. And her father actually is very uh, vocal in, about yes, the medical cannabis use as well. So I would love to have 
any of them or any member of their team, you know, their office to come and support. That would be amazing. His office has been very uh, supportive of whenever they've asked to be on the show, they've always, and he was really uh, working on him mm. as an industry, but the paper the other day said they were burn up the hemp because it had too much THC in it. Right. A lot of people who grow, they don't know. You, you cannot just look at your seed and know how much THC quality is in it. And a lot of patients are learning the hard way through trial and error, growing their medication and unfortunately getting their medication taken away. Oh. So, yeah, it's been happening a lot recently also. So it's, it's, it's sad because these patients need their medication. We need someone who actually has hemp seed, you know, CBD high strains to, you know, to step in and to yeah, help Because patients. the card so says another... you can grow your own, but right. how would I know how to grow it? All of that. So that's another reason why this event is so important. We have different um, local growers, patients who are knowledgeable in that field who intend on coming also. So. What, so you have somebody that could guide you through the growing process? There's a, there are actually a couple of farms out here that help disabled veterans to for therapeutic purposes to grow and to show. Uh, Camo, actually, we, we had an older office where we taught classes, but because the classes became so large and our office was so small, we... <laughs> right. Now we have our kiosk over at the Ohana Holly Marketplace right. where people can come, but we still, you know, we need but, a larger space for, yeah, and you, for but fundraising the grow, for that the also. And, because if, if I got 10 plants, mm -hmm. I don't know, I mean, you have to where, get them all where, tested. where <laughs> do you grow? And if you live in, a, right. in an apartment, how would you exactly. grow A lot of plants? places don't have a, a regulation or anything set in place for patients to grow their medication where they live. That's another um, hot so, button issue. So you all are doing that also? Advocating for that, yes. Okay. Well, listen, we are just about out of time. One more time. Uh, the flyer, can we look at the flyer one more time? And we have, it's all ready to go. And thank you so much. Thank and we'll see you next time. Aloha. Uh -huh.